Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we have gathered this morning to rejoice and be glad in it, and it is so good to see each of you here this morning. Um, what a Sunday. Uh, back to school Sunday, so there's a little bit going on, um, but we do have a couple of, well, that's a lie. We have like five or six announcements to bring to your attention, so let's hit those really quickly. I think my mic is going in and out, but we'll just run with it. Is it just me? It's probably just me. Okay, today, what's, what's happening after church? Does anybody know? Potluck. Y'all don't seem quite as enthused about that as I expected you to be, because I'm pretty excited about that, that we have potluck immediately following. If you just came here today for the first time, it's your first time in a long time, well, congratulations. I'm not one who is uh, pro, pro lottery, but I mean, your luck was for today, so I'm just saying, it's a good day to be here because we have potluck lunch immediately following over in the fellowship hall. We also have a school supply drive that is ongoing. You'll see, uh, later you'll see three bins here with the school supplies already there. If you have anything to put into those bins, you can do that at the close of the service, or you can bring those by the church office. Next Sunday, we have a special project going on. There is a wheelchair ramp at Gallman UMC that I believe has been built, and now it needs to be primed. And so youth, where are my youth? We've got some youth in here. We're going to have a lot of fun. Yes. All right. So youth are going to go and prime the wheelchair ramp after church next Sunday. I'm going to get to eat at Georgia Blue, which might mean that I might have to join in with that. Um, and then going to paint. Adults are welcome to drive and help. And if you'd like to even supply some snacks in the afternoon, that would be wonderful. Let Jana know if you want to volunteer. And also coming up on August the 24th, we will have acolyte training. Um, and so that's coming up on August 24th. More information about that to come. And then finally, choir practice starts back today at 5. Now, everyone is welcome. We might weed you out after choir practice, but everyone's welcome. Um, that's not really up to me, is it? No, okay, all right. So Nick says everyone is welcome, so that's choir practice today at 5 o'clock. Well, that is a little of what is going on in our life together as the church. Seriously, Blaze age is up. What? Seriously, Blaze age and up. Okay, Blaze age and up. I don't even know what that means, but it sounds like a good thing. So... Blaze, age, and up. Ask Nick afterwards what that, sixth grade and up. Okay, that's what that means. Fantastic. Well, let's uh, turn to God now in prayer. Oh, God, we are so grateful to you for this day, this day that you have made and we do gather to rejoice. We gather to fellowship. We gather to eat. We gather to be with one another. And we gather with all of our cares and our concerns all of our fears and all of our hopes and all of our dreams. We gather with all of our failures of the week that is past and our anxieties of the week that is to come. Come, Holy Spirit. Use this time as a part of your continuing transforming work in each of our lives that we might be your church. Amen. Thank you. 
us rise now in body or in spirit and join in our call to worship. Let's all join our voices together and say, Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for, for he, he is good. good. His steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty doings of the Lord or declare all his praise? Happy are those who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Hymn 529, How Firm a Foundation. How firm a foundation you say. The Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and in earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father. Good morning, everybody. All right, so today's, as we know, special Sunday blessing of the backpacks, our school supply drive. We have our bins right down here, and we have the potluck after. But, oh, I can't believe the summer went by so fast. 
and now it's start of school year, and I know, Jill, I know we can't. It's like, what is happening? Is Caroline in here, Rebecca, Jessica? I mean, it's a big deal, right? Senior year. I can't believe it. Okay, so I'm going to call up our elementary, our preschool, our elementary grades through sixth grade. If you guys will please come up here to the altar. All right, you guys spread out, kneel down, please. Okay. Ooh, you guys are so pretty today. Keep, keep going over here. Go ahead. Okay. You need to go over here. Hi, Boo Boo. All right. Okay. All right. And next, our administrators, our teachers, our coaches, our administrators of schools, will you please come up as well? All right, you guys scooch in a little bit. Scooch in so you look really comfortable. Okay, scooch in. Scooch in this way. Scooch in. Scooch in. You can just stand behind them if there's no room. It's okay. We've got lots. We've got lots. Um, Christy, pretty sure you're a teacher. <laughs> Nice try. Ha, 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 ha. All right. Um, take this, everybody. And now our parents, we're going to pray over our children, too. So please come on to put to lay your hands on your child. It's um, going to be a crowded altar. It's okay. I see some, I don't know if you guys are guests, or I have two children over there. Oh, no, that's youth age. Oh, my gosh. I'm my Careful. Oh, right. Where do you go? Well, that's okay. Your mom can take it. Let us pray. Oh God, in this time as we gather at the beginning of a new school year, um, it's, a, it's an opportunity. And yet sometimes it's one that's filled with, well, um, anxiety and fear about what does this mean? What's this going to look like? Sometimes there are complications that arise at home that, that make school seem a little bit more challenging. And sometimes just in general, School can be very hard. Lord, we pray for, first of all, our students. Lord, that they would be at ease, that they would know, Jesus, that you are with them at all times. Oh, God, that where there are difficulties and challenges, that you will bring those alongside them to help them and guide them and give them the wisdom that they need. And also, God, that you would remind them that they, too, are agents of your kingdom, they are ones who are going and sharing the love of Jesus with others. In fact, they are missionaries sent into what can be a very difficult mission field. Oh God, bless them. Remind them as they put these backpacks on their back, as they make their way to school, that they are the church and that they take you with them. God, for our teachers, oh Lord, the many challenges that they face as they seek to balance the needs of the, so many different children who learn in so many different ways, who have so many different situations of life which bring new challenges into the schoolroom. Give them your wisdom, your grace, and your peace that they also would see this as an opportunity to share your love, Lord Jesus your grace and your strength. Encourage them. Give them new learning and a desire to be about your business for they too are missionaries in a mission field. And for those who are administrators and coaches and any others associated with the school, we pray your wisdom and your blessings upon them that they would be able to see a way forward that would be what's best that would be just and good for all children. What a big task. But you are a big God. And we thank you. Thank you for your blessings upon us. Bless these children, teachers, and administrators. 
Empower them to be your church. Amen. All right. Thank you. Go back. Parents, if you have a student that's in junior high, middle school, high school, college, you might want to stay up because at this time, we'd like to call and ask for all of our youth, our seventh grade and up college students, if you guys would come down and kneel so we may pray over y'all. And I know who y'all are, so come on. Let us pray. Oh God, we are so grateful that at all times that you walk with us. Lord, now as we see those who are on the, the closing stages, if you will, they, they've reached Wednesday and they're on their movement to Friday. They have passed the middle part and now they are looking forward to a new day, a day of, well, Maybe someday soon. Maybe it's still a few years off. But I'll be done with this school thing. Oh God, help us all to remember that we are all in a place of learning. We are all in a place of growing. That what you are doing through our um, junior high and high school and college years is you are perfecting us. You are working on us to prepare us to go forth as adults into your world, again, as agents of your kingdom. Bless these students, O oh God. Touch them in a special way. As they go through these years of their lives, they are experiencing new pressures, new physiological changes, things that are going on at home that they might not understand. And it can bring difficulty and anxiety struggles. Lord, the, the pains of relationships grow all the more pointed. God, protect, encourage, and inspire. Inspire these to see as, uh, as you would see them. Inspire them to see a new day and a new opportunity each day to share your love with those around them. The pressures from peers is real and it hurts all of us when we see injustice take place. God, empower them to now speak up, to be a part of your good work and your kingdom. God, be with the parents. For many in this time, this becomes one of the more difficult times of parenthood. Encourage and strengthen them. Give them the wisdom that they need to give the guidance that their children still need. Most of all, Jesus, help us. Help us to be your church at all times and in all places. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.
thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with Turn in your hymn books to seven, ten. Faith of our fathers.
Let us pray. O oh God, we are called to be true to you, and to be true to you is to give of ourselves. Lord, we ask now as we bring to you your tithes and our offerings, that you will take and use these for the advancement of your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You know, you've been sitting for a while. You might as well stand up for a little bit longer as we go to our scripture for this morning from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3 and 8 through 16. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person... And this one, as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. 
If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. You may be seated. Pray with me now, if you will. And now, God, I ask that either through me or in spite of me, that you would speak to these, your people. Amen. Today we are beginning a new series called Pillars of Faith. Pillars of Faith. Now, you know what a pillar is. A pillar, let me give you a technical definition. I actually don't know how technical this is. I just did a Google search and this is what it came up with. But in architecture and building construction, a pillar is any isolated vertical structural member such as a pier, column, or post. It may be constructed of a single piece of stone or wood or built up of units such as bricks. It may be in any shape and cross-section. A pillar commonly has a load-bearing or stabilizing function, but it may also stand alone as do commemorative pillars. That's a pillar. Now, we've got pillars around the church, and, and you've experienced them already this morning, whether you realize it or not. If you came in through the front of the sanctuary, there are six pillars. A column is a pillar, so six pillars out there. Decorative or not, I don't know, but they're there, and I feel more comfortable because that's a lot of stuff hanging over that little space. So six pillars out there as you walk in. There are five pillars um, on the each side of each sanctuary here. You, you, you see them? And these are... I don't know, are they fake? Are they real? I I have no idea. But regardless, they're there, and and they look like, at least, that they would be something that would support the, the roof that is over us. And each of the pews that you are sitting on has four pillars. Unless you happen to be in the first three rows of the center section or the last four rows of the outer section, yes, I went and looked and counted them. There are pillars, there are supports that are holding you up that are not seen, but they're there. And finally, we have another pillar. There are others here, but this is the last one I'm going to mention right here. Holding up the baptismal font is one pillar. And let me tell you, that thing is heavy. That's a stout little pillar right there. And if it needs to be moved, we call Nick. So, it's, it's, they're all around us, these pillars. Well, well we're going to have this series over the next four weeks called Pillars of Faith. And today we're looking at how faith acts. So what is faith? We've talked about pillars. You understand that. Well, the writer of Hebrews says this. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. I want to tell you that whether you recognize it or not, right now, You are exercising your faith. You're doing it right now. In fact, it's faith in something that I just talked to you about. You are exercising faith because you have been a dutiful Methodist. And you have stood up when it was time to stand up. And what did you do afterwards? You sat back down. Did anybody have the question, is the pew going to hold me up? Am I going to fall? I mean, depending on who's sitting next to you, you might have wondered. I don't know. But you you sat down. You had faith. That's what faith is. Faith is what you are willing to put your weight on. If you have faith in something, you are willing to sit down or stand upon it. Has anybody ever done any construction where you, you had this 
this scaffolding put up and you wondered about it? I've done that. In fact, I've had one where it was like scaffolding with a ladder on top of the scaffolding. And I'm like, no, you don't pay me enough. I don't have faith in what has been constructed in front of me. But you are exercising your faith just by sitting there, by placing your weight upon the pew. Well, of course, we're not talking about pews. We're not talking about buildings per se. What we're talking about is a movement. It's a movement that began, well, in many ways with this person that we call Abraham. If we went back in in the book of of Genesis, that is the, the beginning. When we went back to Genesis 12, we would hear this opening line to this story. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. Right off the bat, let me ask you, where is that land? Is it named here? We don't know. It just says, to the land I will show you. God says that I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. How in the world is that going to happen? I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That's about as, you know, just kind of generic and nondescript of a thing as far as trying to figure out where you go. I mean, I'm new here, and some of you tell me how to get to some place, and for the most part, you realize that I'm new. And so you give me good descriptions. But what God gave to Abram was just the same thing as somebody saying, well, you just go down to where the old drugstore used to be back before it was bulldozed in 1983, and you turn there and go look to where the old oak tree used to be at the corner of where the softball field was. You you hear what I'm saying? God didn't even give Abram that. It just go to the land that I'll show you when? I don't don't know. But listen to what verse 4 says. So Abram went as the Lord told him. So Abram went as the Lord told him. Where, Where was he going, Nick? That's what Abram said. I don't know, but I'm going. If if any of you ever had that with a, um, I'm looking at at least one person I know who's done like a major career change, kind of earlier midlife, and everybody looks at you like you're crazy. I can't even tell you what the guy who interviewed me um, to, to go to work for GE said after I told him it's okay that I didn't get the job that I interviewed with you before because I'm actually going to go to seminary and go be a pastor, I can't tell you because there would be an SPRC meeting immediately after church. Well, maybe immediately after the potluck there would be an SPRC meeting because how could he speak like that? I mean, there is this, how can you do that? Where are you going? What is this going to look like? I don't know. I, I don't know. Sometimes we, we're acting not upon our knowledge, but upon who it is that's called us to act. And that is exactly what this is. It's not upon knowledge of what the end game is or, or what it's going to look like when we finally get there or how is this going to happen and having all the details figured out. It's simply knowledge of the person who has called us to act. This is how faith acts. And the writer here in Hebrews sees that. He he says that our ancestors received approval 
it's because they had faith. Now, faith is one of these things that can get us into, we can have just some weird ideas about what faith is and how faith acts. We, we can have the idea that it's just mere belief or optimism in something. It's, it's not without merits, our faith. I have a certain um, mindset. It, it's kind of, well, it, it's what goes along with the Christian faith. And, and that is a Christian faith, a faith in Jesus Christ. Why do I have that? Was it because Jesus was this amazingly awesome teacher who just gave these, these wonderful tales and stories? Well, I mean, that, they, they are. I mean, they're, they're fantastic. But there are lots of people with fantastic tales and stories. There are lots of, of good moral teachers out there, people that, that have ideas about how we should relate to one another, um, both interpersonally relate to one another and relate to one another as a group and, and then as our broader community, how we should let, relate to one another. There are a lot of people with wonderful ideas about that. Jesus has a lot of things to say about that. But, but that's not really enough. And, and I'll just cut to the chase. The reason why I have faith in Jesus is real simple. Because he predicted that he was going to die and then he'd rise from the dead afterwards, as crazy as that sounded, but he actually did it. You can talk about a lot of things relative to Jesus, about, about his teachings and his, his, his things that he did, the miracles he did. I mean, the miracles themselves really should have us going, golly, I, that, that should make you stop. And it made a lot of people stop and pay attention. But it was overcoming that final enemy, the grave itself, that has us going, I give up. What else is he going to do? What else is there for us to see and go, okay, this is who, when he speaks, I've got to listen. There's nothing more. Faith, says one scholar, is not a general religious attitude to life. It's not simply believing difficult or impossible things. The faith in question is the faith which hears and believes the promise of God, the assured word from the world's creator, that he is also the world's redeemer, and that through the strange fortunes of Abraham's family, he is working to build the city which is to come. One of my New Testament professors in seminary, Ben Witherington, said that faith trusts in the, these realities and acts on the assurance that they are real and will come to pass. Faith provides the assurance about things to come that is necessary in order for one to go on living faithfully in the light of those things. Faith can amount to having a conviction about the unseen realities. And he concludes by saying this, Our author does not have in mind human testimony to the faith of saints, but God's attestation to their faith in Scripture itself. God is saying, these are the faithful ones, not the perfect ones. So how does faith act? Well, faith hears. Faith listens. Faith sees. Faith responds. Does faith wait around for the promise to happen before going, okay, well maybe then I can trust you. Abram had nothing. Nothing. 
He literally had nothing. When he left his father's house, he had nothing he had to start over. He ended up a rich guy. We got that. But he started out with nothing but faith. Faith in the God who had spoken to him. And sometimes that's the way it is for us. Sometimes we just have to trust, not knowing, not seeing. Did you know that communion is an act of faith? In communion, we are saying that this is the body and the blood of Jesus that is given for us. We're saying that Jesus himself, God himself, came down with us. And he wants to remind us that he's always there. That he's never left us. So this morning, let us exercise our faith as we enter into this time of communion. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you. We don't understand and fully get all that you're calling us to. Help us to be people who truly trust, who act in faith, not seeing and understanding everything, not knowing everything, but trusting the one who has called us, called us to be a transformed people, called us to be a transforming people, called us to be the church. Amen. Let's now join together in the prayer of great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who look for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you. And blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor. To proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant 
poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. And now, as the redeemed children of God, let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ, shed for you. This morning, I'm going to ask my family to come and help me in sharing Holy Communion. We're going to have two stations, one over here and one over there. And this is what I'm going to invite you to do. I'm going to invite you to go out the side aisles down and to receive the elements and come to the communion rail and kneel and pray and consume those here. Or you may go back to your seat. Please go back to your seat through the middle aisles. I'm going to ask the outside two rows to, or sections to come first. Um, Y'all know how to do this, so be orderly. You can, you can handle this. Um, and then the center section will come um, after they are finished. Because of a mix-up and ordering, we got sent the wrong thing. You might get a cup that will have a wafer at the top. If you would like to take a double dose of the Lord's body, you are welcome. However, you do not have to use that. We will have bread handed to you um, when you come.
table is set, you may come.
Let's stand now for our closing hymn, number 714, I Know Whom I Have Believed. Just a moment, we're going to go and have our potluck. We are going to, I am going to go that way. So if you'd like to come see me, you can see me on the doors going into the fellowship hall, and I will greet you there. Is that okay? Well, we're going to have a benediction and a blessing all at one time because nobody's told me any difference, so that's what we're going to do. Let's pray. Oh God, we are so grateful to you. You have called us to live our faith. We pray that you would take and use this time, this time that we have of sharing a meal together, a time of fellowship, a time of sharing old stories and new ones alike, a time of simply being with each other in your presence as a part of your continuing transformed work in each of us, that we collectively might be your church. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.